Okay, well, hello and welcome to Tori Amos. Hello. Thank you. Okay, we're here to talk about your new album, which is called American Doll Posse. Um, now, before we get into the uh, specifics of the album and, and what the kind of idea is, uh, are you comfortable with it being referred to as a concept album? Uh, whatever you want to refer to it as, it's fine. Okay, well, let's get to the to the concept in that case. Um, could you sort of explain to the for the benefit of our, our users what the what the sort of what the idea is really behind the the different characters and and so on? The music came first with this mm. work, so as a creator, the sonic world is my map. Mm -hmm. The visuals always come after. Therefore, I started to recognize different musical structures and a potential for varied arrangements. Sometimes when I do a work, there's a thread or a theme that runs through, and you think, okay, I'm going to be investigating electronic music. I bring in the electronic keyboards, and it's heavier on that, such as from the Choir Girl Hotel, something I put out in 1998, mm -hmm. or more of an organic record, such as Scarlet's Walk, which I did in 2002. So, in this case, it was um, it was something that I had to really recognize and um, make a decision very quickly. I think the producer hat came on okay. more than the piano playing hat, mm -hmm. because the piano player has to sometimes allow other musicians to be more front and center mm -hmm. than the pianist, and I think that's been... She didn't rebel so much. I think that she enjoyed flirting with the other different instrumentation. Okay, so that's... Is the producer side of you... I mean, we're talking about sides of you here with, with this album. I mean, there are, if I, I can name the, the characters Santa, Clyde, Isabel, Pip, and of course Tori. Yes. Um, now, I, I believe that they're actually going to be joining you on stage um, during, during the tour and also writing blogs um, throughout this year. Correct. Um, presumably you're, you're going to be writing those blogs. Is there parts, <laughs> parts of you? That's well, let's hope that they possess me and that I allow them to. That's sort of the agreement that we have. Okay. I think whenever you're um, doing a conceptual work like this and that it's ongoing, mm -hmm. You have to, there is a discipline, you have to allow yourself the space to become a canvas mm -hmm. so that um, you're able to create, not just from the perspective of me waking up and just writing whatever comes to my mind. Mm. I mean, there is a, there is hopefully a method to the madness. So yes, it will continue through December, and the idea is a different woman will take stage every night. And is it right to say that they're different sides of you, or are they different sides to to women in general? That's a or really both? that's a really good question. They're based on an ancient paradigm. I worked with the Greek pantheon, so when I was hearing the differences sonically. I divided them up into five compartments, mm -hmm. if you will, and then I applied five women from the Greek pantheon to the sonic representations. So who you know of as Pip mm -hmm. holds Athena, and Isabel would hold Artemis loosely. Um, Santa, Aphrodite, Clyde, Persephone, and Tori holds this strange mix of Demeter because she is fertile and she is the songwriter, um, but Dionysus, I think that she's very in touch with this male testosterone mm -hmm. element, so she'll be in trousers. And partying? Partying. I think she's learning to do that quite well. Good. Okay. All right. Um, now, you've, we've been here before with you s slightly. I'm thinking of the, the Strange Little Girls album, where obviously you were s singing 
or rather covering songs written by men about women, but from a female perspective. And even um, artistically, the artwork for that album, you, you dressed up as different characters for it. So w would it be fair to say that that was the precursor to this idea? Was it the beginning of, of where this sprang from? I think that's fair. I think that that was a foreshadowing of exploring this more than just portraiture. Mm -hmm. That project ended with the sonic and visual presentation together. I didn't take the visual expression on the road because I felt that they weren't necessarily extensions of me. Right. They were more the anima of the songs written by the men. Sure. So this, I would say, is my version of applying the Greek pantheon to Tori. And mm. it would be different for a woman in Iran or a woman in the United States or Jenny mm -hmm. or Chelsea. It would be it would look different okay. and it would be expressed differently. But this is I guess I'm I am revealing a bit how it works in my world. Okay, which is obviously the, the job of the artist, you, you could argue. But anyway, to move away from um, the sort of quite heavy sort of conceptual stuff about gender and so on, uh, to a nice lightweight subject like um, politics, um, there's a, c a couple of obviously political tracks on, on the album. I've only heard it once or twice, but um, something like Yo George, for example, you know, you don't need to hear it often to know what it's about. Um, and I was just wondering if you feel that um, the sort of mainstream American opinion about Iraq and so on is, is changing now, because I, I remember, you know, it was only a few years ago that the D Dixie Chicks, there was a sort of witch hunt about them sort of saying anything at all against it. And I'm just wondering if you, if you sense any kind of change in opinion. Well, I do think there is a change in opinion, but I also think that there are more troops that are going. And although there's a Democratic Congress, I don't think you can be naive to think that the executive office doesn't hold power, because it does. And it is backed by a very um, effective and strong religious right wing. Whoever is the commander in chief in the United States still has to acknowledge that there is um, quite a force that you can call the right wing um, in America, but it also has many other names, and it holds a lot of power with certain corporations, hmm. and as a minister's daughter, I've had to look at it objectively, and this is not about the nice little ladies that go to church and have their faith. My mother is one of those wonderful women. Hmm that has her faith and is a believer in Christ's message. But those women aren't who I'm talking about here. I'm talking about an organization that's really been able to hijack the idea of Jesus and um, move right on through with their agenda. Now, how this affects the average person is curious to me. I think it does have an unbelievable effect. Hmm. No different than the class system has in Britain. True. That does affect the average British person. And being an American, you can see that. So I think that ADP is investigating through the eyes of an American woman um, many different subjects, one being where we have taken our country and the lie that propelled this war in the first place. 
it's funny mentioning obviously being American, but you live here. <coughs> excuse me, you live here now and have done for is it ten years? Is it as long as that? I have a foothold in both places. So okay. if we're fair, I I'm a double agent. Right. Okay. So yes, I have a foot in America. I have a home there. And we have a home here. Okay. Our daughter goes to school here. Right. But my, my question was, has, has that given you a new perspective on what it is to be American and America itself, by, by not necessarily being based there all the time? I think there's a detachment that you can have when you are not myopic. Hmm. When you're only in one place all the time, um, especially if you're in a place that doesn't get a lot of outside information, hmm. then it's it's tricky to have an objective point of view. Being able to come out of the states, and and honestly, I think the British press is quite good at um, holding its government's feet to the fire. I think mm -hmm. that is one of its strengths. So being exposed to different ways of thought. Um, has been, I think, well, it's been eye-opening, and it's pushed me as a person and as an American. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I was w wondering as well, has the experience of motherhood, um, well, obviously it's, it's changed you, but um, has it had a direct bearing on, on this album and, and the themes in this album? I think because Tash now is six, and she said to me, um, a little while ago, she said, Mommy, I need to talk to Tori Amos. And I said, okay, give me a second. And so I just gave, came out of the room and came and I said, okay, go ahead. She said, I did something today. And um, so these evil people came up to my friend and said that she was um, a baby, and she's nine years old, right. and Tash was, I guess, five at the time, and she said, so I told them that I was going to do high karate on them and kick their ass, <laughs> and I did this. <laughs> okay. And I said, well, let's get it right, and we changed the fingers, we made sure it was the right finger. <laughs> And we practiced it in front of the mirror and we flicked it. I said, you know, you have to have the right attitude if you're going to flick that. And as a piano player, you know, you, you can do that kind of thing and it is effective. And so she said, you know, thank you because I really need to know that. I said, yes, you do need to know that. And if you're going to use it, you have to understand, though, that somebody might want to kick your ass back. She goes, oh, okay. Now, in that moment, what I realized was that my little girl that had been with us on three other world tours, who had been sheltered in a way from the goings-on of grown-up speak, hmm. was not that same... She wasn't at that stage anymore. But she'd seen the difference between Mummy and Tori Amos? The yes. Okay, I see. And she was also able to understand that maybe there's some things that aren't appropriate to go back to right. school with. And in this, you know, she's able to separate what is um, the creative expression and what is what she might take back to school with her. Right. And so I did begin to understand that I can have conversations with Tash as her mom and she's beginning to see that the art world and creative expression is one thing and then how you act at school mm. and what you say as a six-year-old to your teacher is a very different thing and she can't just go and say I want to kick your ass when they make her do her spelling test mm -hmm. twice. So I think that we made a lot of progress there and she does realize that we're going to talk about things publicly and on stage that aren't necessarily something she needs to be repeating right now. Right. 
Okay, so that, that in, a, in a sense that experience was almost like a, a green light for you to know that you could, you could go ahead with this. Is That's that a very good point, yes. Okay. Once okay. I knew that I could communicate with her as a mother, then the artist was free. Okay. And um, if we can go back um, to sort of when the beginning of your career, or the beginning of your success anyway, um, a lot of lazy journalists refer to you as the new Kate Bush. Um, you're probably aware of that. I was just wondering, do you think Regina Spex is the new Tori Amos? I wouldn't do that to her. I don't think you can do that to anybody. I don't think that's... I mean, as you said, what would you, that would lazy. be lazy. I think she's her own person. And um, always the women that come before you take their machete mm. in this music business jungle and create a path. The, all the women that have gone before me, if they hadn't created some kind of path, I wouldn't be where I, where I am. But then I had to take my tomahawk mm -hmm. and create my own path amongst all that. And she will have to do the same and is doing the same. And there are others that are going to do that as well. So I do, I do think that there has to be a sense of individuality. Sure, but uh, I mean, it was a, a flippant way to ask the question, and I, I, I wish I hadn't now. But what I, <laughs> so what, what I meant really was, are you a fan? Is, is what I meant. Do, 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 do you like her? Well, do you know what? I, I, I must be honest. I have heard of her, but I have been really in a bubble for the last 14 months, mm. creating and sort of been in, in lockdown. So I'm just beginning to expose myself to new artists okay. and I and I am really sort of hungry to listen again because I do shut myself off when I go into a creative space. Do you remember the last new artist that you heard that you thought well this this actually is a, a new talent this is somebody worth investigating? Yes I do but I usually don't talk out of school I'm going to tell you why because you know you might understand this and you might not I don't know but I do run into these people sometimes, some of them. And when you pick favorites out, um, I, don't, I don't like to do that. And I also I think it's really personal. Mm -hmm. The things that I like, there's so much that you do that does get exposed as an artist that sometimes my personal taste or something I do, I do keep between that's me and my ears. Perfectly understandable. I won't push that on. Okay. Um, now, I was doing a bit of research, obviously, it's only good manners, um, before I came here, and I, I was surprised to read that you um, were actually a bit of a pioneer against internet piracy. Um, one, for your album, uh, Scarlet's Walk, you had this idea of gluing down CD players with, um, with CDs and the advanced copies for journalists, and that's actually something that was taken up. Um, I don't know if you're aware of that, but it became a kind of a, a standard practice. Yeah, but my glue was good. I'm sure it was. It yeah. was rocket glue. It must have been. And you couldn't get it out. <laughs> Do you know the drummer, Matt Chamberlain, tried to get the CD out, bless him, and he cut his hands because, well, it, I mean, it was, I used the sticky stuff. Well, he shouldn't have tried, should he? No, he shouldn't have. But the, I was really wondering about the internet in general, not just in terms of music, but, I mean, how, how do you feel about it as a you know, just as an entity in society. Do you, do you have strong feelings about the internet? Well, I love it. I mean, I could not be doing this multimedia project in the way that course, I'm attempting yes. to do without it. The mm. idea that you can have a project that is, um, what would you say, um, um, every night with the live performances and every week with the online journals, there is a sense of, well, jazz. I mean, it's it's kind of, I don't know what's going to happen beforehand in a lot of cases, and the project is um, improvisational. Mm. Yes, the, the record, the double, it's a double album, as you know, that you get um, is set in stone in the artwork, and you hold that and have that, and that's not going to change. But they are coming to life. The project doesn't end with yeah. the double album. It goes through the tour and it goes till the journal's end and that will be until Christmas. And I've never done that before. I'm really fascinated by this idea of um, 
that the album is only the jumping off point mm. because of the internet and because of multimedia. And so, yes, it is my friend and it is a co-conspirator. Um, as you know, I do believe in paying for things. I'm not mm. going to just put a bottle of wine in my bag if I'm there doing a wine tasting. It's one thing to sample the wine, and it's another thing to just say, oh, I'm just going to put that in my bag. I like that Pouillac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know, sure. because if I like that wine grower and I want them to do more of it, then, then I do want to support it. So that's how I feel about it. I have always maintained, though, and this isn't to um, lovey-dovey up to any of those um, people who believe that everything should just be for their taking, because, you know, I'm not somebody who, who tries to walk on eggshells about that stuff. But if you can't afford the music, then take it. Right. But one day you will have to give back mm. to that, or you become a taker. And you may think you're okay with becoming a taker, but you know, there are other things that are ta tapeworms or takers. And right. so when you look in the mirror, you will have to see that you are a tapeworm. Is that, is that a sort of karmic idea about, you know, what goes around comes around? Is that, is that what, how you feel about that? You know, I, I'd like to think that it's much more insidious and evil than that. Really? I'd like, yes, I'd like to think that you hold yourself accountable, not that there's some, you know, um, what would you say, uh, universal justice. Mm. Um, I don't think it's that simple. I don't think that some people get what's coming to them in their lifetime. Mm. You know, a lot of people do die um, in splendor and not having to pay for their atrocities in any way, shape, or form. So, on the three-dimensional plane of Earth, it seems to me that you or I have to be the ones that look in the mirror and say, you know, what have I become? Hmm. Do I, am I a hypocrite? Do I really believe what I'm saying? And if you do think that everything should be for free and everything should be taken, then I think everything should be taken from you too. Otherwise, well, then y you really are a hypocrite. Okay. Well, I'm just going to finish up now by um, taking just from what you said from your last answer there about um, about how some people don't have to pay during their lifetimes. Do you, I, I'm not sure of the exact state of your spiritual beliefs, um, but I, I, I'm going to ask a fairly direct question. Do, do you believe that those people do pay eventually in some other other life or some other form? First of all, what do you believe? <laughs> about that specific question? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I, I thought it was too, that's why I asked you. But <laughs> I'm curious, so I am curious. I'm undecided about those things, and which is why I ask people who I think will have valid opinions, such as yourself. Um, in this instance, there is a medicine man that I've known for a while, since after Scarlet's Walk. Maybe because of that album, doors opened mm -hmm. that hadn't been opened in that way before to certain spiritual people that keep themselves usually to themselves within the Indian community in the United States. It's, you can't just knock on their door and say, yeah. hi, can we have a chat? They really come and find you. And this, this wonderful being um, really believes that our actions take us to our next plane of existence. He didn't define it to me, but when I look in his eyes, he truly believes that you are creating, you are, you are choosing your next incarnation, whatever that looks like to you. Mm. Um, some people call it a heaven, some people call it a hell. I don't think it's that simple. My parents really believe in a heaven and a hell. Mm. I, don't, I think heaven and hell are here, and that we create that for ourselves. And sometimes, you know, there are arguments about this, but I do think that 
that this is a free will planet. There, there are accidents. Mm. I do think that you can make choices that end up in tragedy that day. And I don't think that, that these wonderful fourth or fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth dimensional beings just jump in and save you every time because, you know, you did good things last month. Mm. I, I don't think it's that simple. I do think that that bad things happen to good people. And yeah. I don't necessarily think it's your destiny that that happens. I disagree with that. Mm. I do think that it is, as I said before, a free will planet. And it's how you react to situations that are handed to you. We are all challenged. We all have to deal with, I think, um, tragedies and hopefully joys. Mm -hmm. And it's in how we respond to it, not do they happen. Okay. Um, I said that was my last question. C could I possibly ask you one yes, more? Yes, because yes. this is interesting to me. Um, I, I mentioned that I, I actually was lucky enough to interview Ray Manzarek last week, and we talked about some of the same kind of stuff. We talked about Iraq and this sort of thing. Then we got onto the more spiritual side of things, and he is still a great advocate of uh, psychedelic drug use, not necessarily throughout your life, but you know he still thinks it has um, value for, for humanity and, and for cleansing the doors of perception. That's their, their thing. And I know your sort of usage of that has been documented and you've spoken about it before. And I was just wondering if you still, f if, if you feel that um, it, it is a useful tool for getting insight into these sorts of questions or... Well, you've, you used a key phrase, a useful tool. Mm. If you are able to use it in that way, then of course I think it is. And let's hope you get what you need in order to take your journey. Sometimes you don't get um, the accurate potion, so therefore you can end up being very ill. Mm. And I was lucky enough when I went on journeys of ayahuasca, um, the Amazonian route that is about an 18 hour journey. I was lucky enough to have um, not experiences that made me physically ill. It made me emotionally, um, well, it took me to places that I don't think I would have gotten to without it, and I had to face some ferocious demons that I had um, chosen to block out. Now, I think, are there other ways to get to it? Well, yeah, I do think there are. Um, there's some people who are able to get to this, I think, with um, hypnosis or certain therapies or some people have been in the desert and have chosen to fast and take themselves almost into a, um, similar to, um, you know, Native Americans do this. Um, when they go out on vision quest and sometimes they don't eat for a few days to allow the vision quest to come. So, yeah, I think that that it can be very eye-opening and yet because it becomes a fashion, because it becomes sort of, I don't know, an accessory, mm. that it loses its potency and its sacredness. And when you talk to these cats who maybe add the mushrooms to their fasting in order to have vision quest. It's not just something that they go out and do because they're they're partying. Mm, they, yeah. they approach it in a very different way and I think that's important. It's mm. one thing if you're going to party then you need to see it as partying. Yeah. And if you're going on some kind of, I don't know, spiritual um, right. vision quest, mm. then you have to approach it differently.